Hi, it's me, Mrs. Wentworth. Um, I'm about to show you a little bit more about the Strings family. Now, the Strings family is a family that's near and dear to my heart. That is actually the first instrument that I learned how to play in school was the viola. That was my instrument, and that is a member of the string family. One of the more famous instruments from the string family I have right here, and it's a violin. Now, this is a little tiny violin. This is one that I bought my daughters when they were about five or six years old and they were learning how to play in like kindergarten. But you'll notice it's very, very small. It's about the size of my head. And if I were to try to play it right now, I'd look very silly because it's very tiny. But it's a real violin. And that's one thing that's different about the string family instruments is that, um, and it's also very cool, is that they can actually make different sized violins and different sized violas and cellos and basses depending on the size of the person. Uh, so this is, this is not a full size, this is much smaller, but you can find videos of little kids out there playing the violin as young as like four or five years old. You can't really do that with a, a trombone. They don't make trombones in different sizes. A trombone is a trombone. <laughs> uh, but that is one thing that's, that's pretty unique about the Strings family. Now the Strings family gets its name because they all have strings. That's right. It's not a hard question. You will also notice that most of the time they're made out of wood. Um, if you're looking at a, a traditional way. If you're looking at maybe an electric violin, which they do make, um, they don't need to have a hollow body, which is this nice little part. You can actually kind of look inside. If you look inside those little curly cues on the sides, they're called F holes because they look like fancy cursive Fs. This is all open inside. So it's kind of like an echo. And that's how the sound gets louder. If we didn't have that, it wouldn't have anywhere for the sound to echo around and get louder. So when you pluck the strings and it can vibrate, you can actually feel the whole instrument vibrate because it's going around inside and echoing around and getting louder. Now, if I were to take something like this instrument right here, this is a cello, and you can see it's much bigger. Uh, cellos are actually meant to be played sitting down. So if I were to hold this sitting down, there we go. I'm going to push this out a little bit. And it should come up to right about here. And I can play it. Now, the way I'm playing it right now is called plucking. I'm using my finger to pluck the instrument, make it vibrate. If I were to use this, this is called a bow, and this is the hair of the bow. It used to be made with real horse hair. They don't do that normally anymore. You rub it across. And that's what makes the string vibrate instead when you're using the bow. The bow vibrates the strings. And again, we still have this nice, big, hollow body for the sound to vibrate in. There we go. Let me put that down safe. Good. Um, some other instruments that you will see in the string family that don't really come into the orchestra are things like guitars or banjos and ukuleles. Um, I have a little ukulele right here. This is a weird looking ukulele, isn't it? But ukuleles also have four strings, just like the violin. <laughs> but 
but you don't play it under your chin. You play it kind of like a guitar. Now guitars, let me get my guitar. And here we go. Do the guitars have the same number of strings as the ukuleles? Can you count? They don't, do they? So I told you that the ukuleles have four strings, like the violin, but I have a lot more strings here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six strings on the guitar. And you can see inside my hollow body of the guitar a whole lot better on this one, can't you? This is called the sound hole. So you can look inside a little bit better. And that is what makes the sound vibrate and echo around again, is that those strings vibrate over the sound hole. And then when I pluck, it echoes around inside and gets much louder. So we have our guitar. And I showed you a ukulele. And as I said, there's also other string instruments that you might be familiar with, like banjo and all those other fun ones that you won't see in, in a professional orchestra. Those are more for like rock groups or pop music or things like that. So uh, let's look a little bit closer at what the four different main instruments are in the orchestra. Again, violin, viola, cello, and bass. Let's see what they look like, their parts and what they sound like, um, and then we're going to look a little bit more into how they make sound later on. Here we go. So let's look at some of the different instruments in the orchestra. There are four main instruments that you will see in a normal orchestra. They are the violin, viola, cello, and the bass. Now the smallest of them are the viola. Oh, sorry, the violin. The smallest is the violin. Um, we have a lot of different parts here. The top part that's kind of swirly, that's called the scroll. These little parts that hang off the top, those are the tuning pegs. And that's one of the things that pretty much every stringed instrument is going to have because when you twist them, it makes the strings tighter or looser so that you can change the pitch and get the right tune. Uh, and as we know, they all have strings, hence the name, the strings family. This little part down here is called the bridge. It pushes up the strings so that they don't rub against the, the fingerboard there and they can vibrate. Because remember, the strings need to vibrate to make a sound. Now, one thing you're going to notice that's only on the violin and the viola is the chin rest. And that is because they are small and go on your shoulder under your chin when you play. You're not going to see a chin rest with our cello or our basses because those are much bigger. All of our orchestra instruments are going to also have a bow. And the bow is what goes across the strings and um, helps them vibrate. So you're not going to notice a huge difference in these pictures between the viola and the violin. They are pretty much the same shape, but the viola is going to be a little bit bigger. Uh, what is different, and you can't really tell it from pictures, are the strings. They have different strings so that the, uh, the viola plays some lower notes and the violin can play some higher notes. So let's listen to a little clip from the violin. So that was our nice high violin. Uh, they tend to get a lot of the melodies in the songs. Now the viola is, as we said, a little bit bigger, thus a little bit lower, and it has a lot of the same pieces. It's just a little bit bigger, again with our chin rest there. And uh, let's listen. It's going to have a little bit lower of a sound also because it is a little bit bigger. Okay, now those are very similar instruments. I always call this like the big sister to the violin. So let's go on to the mommy instrument, the cello. The cello is bigger. You're going to notice there's no chin rest anymore because it's so big that you have to play it 
sitting down. You will notice that all the way down here, there's a little spot that will come out. That's called the end pin. And the end pin makes it so that it can be taller or shorter when you're sitting down and it fits right on the player's body. All of the other instrument pieces are there. They're all the same. It has a bow. Um, let's listen to the sound since it's a little bit bigger. Again, it's going to be a little bit lower. Um, and if that was the mommy, let's go to the daddy of the orchestra. This is the bass. The bass is the tallest. It is so tall that you have to play it standing up. You can't sit down. Um, at best, you might be able to kind of lean on a very tall stool. But these are very tall instruments. They should be about as tall as you. Again, they still have scrolls and tuning pegs and strings and a bridge and everything else is the same. You'll notice it still has the end pin like the cello so it can adjust the height and there's also no chin rest because that would be really silly if you played that under your chin. Now let's listen to a little bit of our bass. Nice. Now just for a reference, it's kind of hard to see in pictures how different these sizes are. So let's look at it next to each other. That's a big difference, isn't it? You can see our friend Quaver. Now the violin is smaller. It's about 23 inches tall. Violas, full-size violas are going to be about 26. So not a huge difference, but definitely a little bit, right? Cellos come up to about the elbow height. You have to play it sitting down. And it should rest right around here on the shoulder with the scroll if you're sitting correctly. And our base. It should be about six feet tall, a full-size one, and it should be about the same height as the person playing it. So do you know a little bit more about what the instruments are? Great. Now let's look about how they make sound. This is really cool. So when you're looking at it, it's kind of hard to tell but the strings are vibrating very, very fast. I found these really cool videos that I want to share with you that show how they actually vibrate if we slow down or if we use a different kind of camera. So first, let's look at what it looks like when you see someone play the violin using a different kind of digital camera that shows how the strings are vibrating as they're played. <laughs> I always think that's really cool to look at. Uh, you can't see that just by looking at the violin. It's a, it's a little way to watch it when the camera is a certain way. Now, let's see what it looks like in slow motion. Don't you just love slow-mo videos? They're so cool. So now I have a special guest that I want to introduce to you. I was very lucky to have a friend, Miss Picaro, who was willing to come and do a little interview with me to show you the difference between the violin and the viola. So let's go meet Miss Picaro. Hi, Miss Picaro. It's nice of you to join us today. What do you have in your hands? Hi, this is a viola. Hmm. You can see it's quite big. Yeah, that looks that looks bigger than mine. I have I have a violin. It's it's about the size of my head. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is this is actually a full size viola, oh. but um, it has some similarities to a violin. It has the same shape. It has a neck. It has a scroll up here and some pegs and tuning pegs. And there's actually one big difference between the two. Viola has the C string. Ooh, that's low. Yeah, the G string. Mm. The D string. And the 
the A string. So the viola has a C string, while the violin has an E string. Oh, so let me. They have different strings. Let me play my E string so I can hear that too. That's much higher, isn't that? Yeah, much, much higher. It sounds like this. Ooh. Yeah, that is much higher. Yep, much higher. So can the violin play that low note you played before? The violin can not play this open C string as an open string, but it can play it as three fingers on the G string. So to find that... Oh, okay, cool. Just a, a higher version of it, right? Yes, just oh. a higher version. Very cool. Do you want to play something for us? Sure, I'll play a little, just a little fiddle tune for you. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you so much for showing us the yeah. violin and the, well, the violin and the viola and what the difference is between that two. I, I'm so glad you got to join us today. Is there anything else you wanted to tell us? Why do you like um, the... Go ahead. I think that that's mostly it, but you can also see that the viola is played with a bow, just like the violin. So that's another similarity. You'll be playing with the bow. Oh, the yeah. String. Do you yeah. always need a bow or can you use anything else? You can also cluck with your fingers. Oh, cool. So that's something you'll probably learn when you're first learning the instrument. That's a cool sound too. I like that. Well, thank you so yeah, much for, <laughs> thanks for joining us today. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me, Mrs. Wentworth. Sure. Thank you, Miss Picaro. Have a good day. Bye. Now I have another guest we're going to talk to. Um, I have a special friend, Mr. Benedetto, who is going to show us a little bit more about our lower string instruments, like the cello. Let's go talk to Mr. Benedetto. Hi, Mr. Benedetto, how are you? Hello, Mrs. Wentworth, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Do you have an instrument to share with us today? I do, as a matter of fact. I have a cello. A cello? Have you ever heard of cello before? I have. They're pretty big instruments. You must be hiding that somewhere. It's pretty big. It's kind of like a violin, oh. but even bigger. It's so big that you actually, yeah, it's like that, except it's so big that you actually have to sit down when you play it. Wow. That Would you like to see it? I'd love to see it. Okay. Ready? Here it is. Oh my goodness. That's my cello. That's huge. And notice how on your violin, you had a little device over here. Yeah. That thing is a chin rest, as you know, but I don't have a chin rest on my cello because I don't put it on my shoulder when I play it. I have to sit down in this chair and I hold it like this. Cool. Very cool. It's so big that it has to go all the way down to the floor. So take a look at the bottom. Oh, my violin doesn't have a pointy thing on the end like that. You don't have a pointy thing on your violin? Mm -mm. Oh, that's too bad because I could take this out and I can extend it to adjust to a different size because I'm very, very tall. Oh, so yeah. I take this spiky thing all the way out and rest it on the floor. And that is called an end pin. This is an end pin so that I can rest it on the floor. Because it's a pin that goes on the end. <laughs> How did you figure that out? You I must don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. Notice how I'm not holding it with my hands. Yeah. That's it's pretty cool. It's resting on the floor. Let me just... Can you see that? Yeah, yeah. It's a, the pin is touching the floor right near your feet. And it's also resting kind of in my lap. I'm holding it with my legs. Mm -hmm. And that keeps me steady. And now I don't need my hands to hold the cello. It's kind of rests on 
then I can use my hands to play the chant. Like that. Nice. Very cool. Can it play really low notes? Because when, when I was talking to Miss Porcaro, her viola, which was bigger than my violin, played lower notes than my violin. What kind of yeah, notes does that one play? Um, and by the way, you probably have one of these that goes with your violin, do you not? I do. And what's this called? It's a bow, not a hair bow. Not a hair bow, no. I have a bow <laughs> also. It has hair on it, but you shouldn't touch the hair, as you know. Yeah. And with the bow, I can play with the bow, and uh, I also have lower strings. The cello goes down pretty low, so I also have. That's, nice. That's the lowest note that the cello can play. That's a lot lower than my note. My note can't go that low. Yeah. Wow, that's cool that you can even put your fingers all the way up here, yeah. not, not just up here at the end. This long black piece of wood that extends all the way down, the violin has this too, uh, except mine's bigger because I'm a cello, and that's called the fingerboard, mm -hmm. and that allows me to place my fingers anywhere all the way up here. Now, we call this up, not down, because this is where all the high notes are. Oh. It looks like it's down in relation to the ground. It looks like my hand is going down, but we actually call that up. It's kind of upside down because this is a high pitch, so we call that up. I'm going up That's there. cool. So things are kind of backwards when you play the cello sometimes. <laughs> it does seem that way. Could you play a little something for us so we can hear what it sounds like? Sure. What are the kids listening to these days? Maybe uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb? <laughs> I hear it's topping the charts. <laughs> All right. Mary Had a Little Lamb. Are you ready? Sure. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, My pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mr. Benedetto. It was great. Nice seeing you. Stay healthy. You too. Have a great day. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that's it for today. I hope you had fun learning about the string family with me, and I can't wait to learn more with you next week. Bye.